by drawing back a rock and here he's got a corner that's luck. <clears throat> hop, hop, says my horse and mount your pawn folk. They must submit. Nature is stronger again. Your king is rid of one. It's like a stupid pawn. Oh. <laughs> Don't go at all. Downright waited for it to happen because now my rook marches. times break out when rooks gain feet. And already I see your king dead. In deep house heat. Mm, not bad at all. Darkness spreads here beneath. What a hostile act, <laughs> says my king. Dumb pawns stand in his way. Left them hanging carelessly. One has to keep them moving, remember that, or else they don't benefit you at all. But war is war. Just standing around dead corpses. So the king has to do all the work himself again. Takes on the permanent threat and crawls close to his horse to use that. Oh. <gasps> go back, go back. That's not how it works. Oh, well, set is set. If you're going to touch one, you have to move him. He's still here and he'll go back here again. Uh, nice and slim. Get your hands off my piece. This is, I won't say it three times over. Fine. Now he stands there again. Got your will. Could you have made an exception? Huh? Mistakes are made to be taken back. Never late. I... I only touched him! And that's all it takes. That's life. Now it's my turn. 
and very elegant, my queen springs into your hinterland. Yeah, yeah. Think I didn't see that? Mm? All because of one stupid mistake? Could you make an exception? Oh, but that's not your strong side. Shit! Can you tell me where I should go now? Not here? Not there? Now the bomb. I knew you'd do that. I knew I'd do that. <sighs> Cheer up, Sophie, baby, don't cry. Our face gets wrinkly or angrily high. Your tears do not help, quite useless are they. Cheer up, Sophie, baby, it's hard I can see. Your sweetheart is gone. But like a hero fights he, the Lord will protect him, that's what I can say. What are you singing? You just heard me. Where'd you learn to do that? From the Black King, who's lying there. Ooh, now the wood's singing to her. As if it's the Black King. You didn't even get a pawn in you. Half a year. Not a black one, not a white one. Yours just buggered off because you didn't ride him often enough. I want to be a queen. I'd only let a king eat. As if. One week ago, I got a letter from my king, whose name is Johannes, and who drove the deliveries from the laundry before he enlisted in the war. In this letter, he bids me to leave, leave the, the work, work in the laundry and to come to him, as he fears he'll never, never see me again. As, as this, this war, he writes, will kill death. him in his shelter. As I didn't want to travel alone, I bid my friend Clara, who also works in the laundry, to come with me to the front. Now we've both arrived. After a long search, I found my husband, Johannes, who was scared and who wouldn't dare leave the trenches. I said, Hello, Johannes. I don't say anything. I said, you wrote me this letter, and now I'm here. My friend Clara is here as well, who, who was in love with you, who didn't get you because you were in love with me. We traveled for three days and nights and didn't sleep. Is that right, Clara? And Clara says, that is true, Rosa. Now we finally found you. And you don't say anything. Are you angry with me? I don't answer. Don't you love me anymore? I don't answer. I throw myself upon you and begin to cry because... You don't want to recognize me anymore, but you look towards the sky with hollow eyes. What can I do, Johannes, for you to see me after I, after we've come all this way? I look towards the sky with hollow eyes. Why? Because I am dead. I cried for a long time, and around me bullets explode, but I am not afraid. So my friend Clara says, take the ring from his finger. Your name is on it. And we should go. Where to, I ask? I don't want to go home anymore, I say, says Rosa. I take the ring from his finger and put it away. We want to find a barn behind the front to sleep because we are tired. Yes. Let's go. So we go. But after an hour, we run into some police soldiers who are looking for looters. 
The police officer grabbed my arm tightly and said, Who are you and what are you doing here behind the front? Her name is Rosa Gabler. I am her friend Clara. We were searching for her husband, Johannes, who she married when he had to enlist and who was killed in the war. Now we are on our way into the hinterland in order to find a barn in which we can sleep since we were travelling for three days and nights. I have strict instructions to arrest any strays because it's teeming with people who are robbing corpses and enriching themselves with plunder. Who, for example, tell me that this ring that you hold in your hand truly is yours and not a dead person whom you've stolen it from in order to sell it off behind the front. Yes, her name is on it, here! Johannes gave it to her and they got engaged. When he went away, she gave him the ring so that he carried her name with him. They work together in Mrs. Cold's laundry. My friend Clara can testify to this as well. Right, Clara? This may all well be true, or not. I will turn a blind eye on the matter and lead you both to the sick bay, where you can sleep, and then you'll make yourselves useful. Every force is needed in times like these, in which blood flows in torrents. But I don't have any experience in nursing, and this must be said beforehand. What do you think, Clara? They need us, Rosa, says Clara. Then you go ahead, says the police soldier to Clara. Why? asks Clara. I don't owe you an explanation. This person here will be examined and then follows you to the sick bed. Body inspection! The question is whether you have any other belongings besides the said ring on you. Off we go. And is that your car? This is the car of our king. <laughs> this is our laundry van, Rosa. Don't you remember? How we used to drive and deliver laundry after you washed and mangled it. <coughs> Us two. All alone in Mrs. Culver's laundry bag. Oh, Johannes. My love. You're alive. Maybe. How that was. How, How was, was that? that? You laid me amidst the sheets. No. Like this. And everything smelt of fresh, clean laundry. Even you. And I was scared that someone could see us in the middle of the street in Miss Culver's van. <coughs> but no one saw us, Rosa. Are you a virgin? Take a look. Love. Love? Until you sleep again? Yes! Like this? Or like this? Or like this? Love! 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 Fancy that? Still have to take the load to the Twatman Street. I alone mangled and hung it all up on the meadow. Pay attention. Women are tiresome. Are you sleeping? I don't want, I don't to, want to be, be dead anymore. anymore. I don't want to be Johannes anymore. The man from the laundry, the man from the trenches, the man you have taken the ring from. You're talking crazy again, Clara. Hey, since coming to the sick bay, it's been getting you down. I've been asking myself this for a while now. Has the war done this to you? Or does it lie in your nature? Hmm? If it's getting somebody down, then it's probably you, Rosa. For you, the war is a pleasure trip. Oh, that and everything else. No day off without some stranger behind the bushes. 
next to the casino. I always see you disappear. Bushes, casino behind, <coughs> legs spread wide. Your hand is alright, I haven't even been dead for two hours. And to add to that, now I see you dragging some tattered lads in the ward up to our bedroom. The little life that's left squeezing out between your thighs. What do you know? One small celebration in the midst of a huge war! You give yourself one! Don't open! Your god so wide as if you were employed as angel of the wounded! Ever since we were in that laundry, you couldn't get enough. Every two hours, off to the toilet. Do you think I don't know what you were doing there? I saw it through the keyhole. The way you uncapped the brass ball from under the window socket and shoved it up your skirt, up and down, up and down, up and down it went. I feel sorry for you, Clara. <sighs> Nothing more. Climb into the van, miss. I have the order to take you to the field brothel. The spreading of sexually transmitted diseases causes undermining of the military force. A couple of injections, and then you'll be completely sanitized. The daughter from a good family. Sorry, Sorry what? what? Did someone report me, or, or how did you find me? Hey, Clara, I don't know who reported you. Do you know her well? My best friend. What a monstrous man of me. I read the report myself. Whatever bad you can say about someone is there. I knew it. Already as the door locked. Is that your car? Nice vehicle. <laughs> Confiscated. From some guy who owns a factory in the area. Special model. Wasn't even anything he could do about it. War is war. Private cars don't exist anymore. Nothing is private anymore. I told him when I went to first pick up the car. Not even him. The look on his face. Have you always been a soldier? I was unemployed before the war. Enrolled voluntarily before everything took off properly. It wasn't for me. Sitting around at home and gaping out the window. Oh, but that's great. Not having to work. You've got no idea when you're young and you've got your whole life ahead of you and suddenly you see all this spare time. I'm not even talking about how it is financially, only the spare time scares you. Sixty years of spare time. Man can't handle it. Have to do something, regardless of what, or else he'll go insane in the mind. Can't we pull over? We can make ourselves comfortable in here, in the car. I've got my orders, miss. I'm not letting myself get distracted. It's not ill will or mean. I have to drop you off. I know what you want. Not happening. Anyway, you haven't healed properly yet. I've got a rubber here. Then it's no problem at all. Hmm? Don't you think they'll know when I arrive late? Maybe just a little. Get out and register with the medic. Then you'll get an injection, and then you'll follow me to the barracks. No offence, miss. Why are you calling me miss? Why not? You're a woman, after all. One must respect that. Nothing goes over respect. You're not a bloke. Or like oneself. Like who? Like oneself. And who is that supposed to be? One self. What are you asking? 
You are someone else. Before I, Johannes Gardner, return to the front, <clears throat> two days holiday, and queue up for the brothel with a coupon. Fifteen were in front of me in the barracks. Fourteen. Two. Show your member, says Sergeant Luffler, into the barracks. I put the ring away as I enter. Why do I put the ring away in which the name of my wife is engraved? With whom I work together in Mrs. Colbert's laundry, and to whom I sent a letter, saying she should visit me if she wants to see me one last time. You don't need to put the ring away, soldier. Pull down your trousers. You have three minutes. Begin. She spreads her legs. My name's Johannes, I say. What's yours? Doesn't matter. You have your coupon? <laughs> and three minutes. Begin. Here is the rubber. I have this feeling, I say, that I'm going to die today. I sent my wife a letter, but she never came. Two minutes. <clears throat> Can I call you Rosa? And you say Johannes to me? Say what you want, but the lads after you won't wait. Rosa. What's going on? I have this feeling. You've said that before. One minute. That's not how it works. They're banging on the door and get up. I get up and leave the barracks. I go to the medic who injects me with the suppository. I line up with my company. I march towards the front. I begin to run. I put my ring back on my finger. I run. Alongside me, a couple fall. I keep running. Bloody 
face, your bloody virgin face on the 50 mark note, but that's your work. Give me something to eat at last. And then, we'll start driving. We have to open the hood. I have no air, we need to, we need to build in a, in a tower. And, of your window. There you stand. With water buckets. What do you still want to do with it? It's mine. I can prove it. You have to shut your eyes. They have to be shut. Now you're dead again, ultimately. Just like at the beginning. 